Hello and welcome to NCC News. I'm your host, Craig McGuire. And I'm your host, Juan Villaroyal. Coming up today, on today's broadcast, Adam Schiff announcing the recognition of the Armenian Genocide, holiday shopping frenzy, and is vaping the new smoking? Good one, son. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. <laughs> First, we went deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> and then we went on Thunder Shark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. <laughs> I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. This is, this is my computer. This is your computer. Let's go on the internet. Let's go. Click it. Yes. Okay. I cursor in between the R and the E. She's gonna love me all over again. That's it. Jamaica, here you go. Here we go. <laughs> Good right. job. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it by myself. Feel smarter. I fainted at the sight of blood. Me, a nurse? I had no idea that's what I'd be when I went to NCC. But NCC is not like other colleges. NCC has a Student Success Center where counselors assist every student in creating a future. I'm so happy. Nurse Robbins, I created that. Be who you want to be. Create your future at NCC. Tonight's story is about the House of Representatives voting to recognize the Armenian Genocide of 1915, more than a hundred years ago. Here's what they had to say about the matter. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. This April would have marked the 104th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, the systematic murder of 1.5 million Armenians and the displacement of millions more by the Ottoman Empire from 1915 to 1923. Many other religious and ethnic minorities in the Ottoman Empire met similar fates, among them the Greeks, the Assyrians, the Chaldeans, and others. More than a century later, it is our solemn responsibility to remember those who were lost to seek justice and restitution, and to educate Americans and those around the world about the crime of genocide. We cannot pick and choose which crimes against humanity are convenient to speak about. We cannot cloak our support of human rights in euphemisms. We cannot be cowed into silence by a foreign power. But what we can do, what we must do, Mr. Speaker, is state the facts. We can say that the Ottoman Empire committed this grotesque crime against the Armenians. But their campaign of extermination failed. And above all, we will never forget and we will never again be silenced. Here. No. Well, I think. And how read that? It was supposed to be voiceover. Well, when other news, the shopping period between Thanksgiving and Christmas six days on the calendar than last year, and that tighter schedule has created a race for holiday shoppers. As retailers make staffing changes and promise speedy deliveries to win more of your dollars in less time, more in today's consumer watch. Attention all shoppers, the calendar do doesn't lie. This year, you have six fewer shopping days between Christmas and Thanksgiving and Christmas. Major retailers are taking notice. They've rolled out plans to attract more shoppers during the holidays and steal shoppers away from Amazon. 
To do that, they're focused on early deals, promising faster deliveries and beefing up in-store services. Walmart kicked off holiday sales in late October, and they started to offer free next-day delivery and orders over $35 for more than 200,000 items. Best Buy is also offering next-day deliveries on thousands of smaller items like tablets and headphones. In stores, Walmart and Target will, de will dedicate additional staff on the store sales floor to help you find products and speed up checkout. Target says it's increasing holiday payroll by $50 million compared with last year. They also say they'll increase the number of hours employees work during the holidays, despite fewer shopping days on the calendar this year. The National Retail Federation says holiday sales will not be impacted. In fact, the NRF estimates retail sales in November and December will grow as much as 4.2% compared to last year. Have you noticed that the number of smokers has gone down since 2010? But not for the reason you think. Teens have been keen to try this as an alternative to smoking. Here's the scoop on the matter. As states around the country deal with a vaping epidemic, senators on Capitol Hill trying to get to the root of the problem. This harms you. This will addict you. This could ultimately kill you. The Senate Committee on Health Wednesday heard from health administrators whose agencies are currently investigating the issue. We continue to suggest that people consider refraining from use of all e-cigarettes or vaping products. So far, it doesn't appear that any one product is to blame, but many cases do seem to be linked with illegal sales. The investigation has also found that THC has been present in most of the samples that the FDA has tested. On Friday, the CDC said vitamin E acetate, an additive sometimes used in THC and other vaping products, may be to blame. What we cannot say right now is whether there are other substances. As they figure it out, health officials sounding the alarm on the rise of youth vaping. Most young people walk around thinking that e-cigarettes are harmless. But while senators agree on the problem... It just seems to me we need swift, bold, quick action. The solution will be harder to find. We're probably going to end up doing the wrong thing. But if you want less kids to smoke, I'd just increase the penalties on people selling to kids, and you might have less kids smoking. In Washington, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. It's offered its checking accounts starting next year. The company is reportedly partnering with Citigroup and a credit union at Stanford University. They want to offer smart checking accounts through Google Pay. The service will provide a digital wallet. Google hasn't decided whether the accounts will charge fees. Google is the latest tech company to move into finance. Companies such as Facebook, Amazon, and Apple have all announced, enhan have announced enhanced money services. Norwalk Community College has many clubs you can join to be a part of the extracurricular activities. One being the TV and Film Club. Students can take a dive what it's like behind the scenes to see what, where the magic happens after the cameras are done rolling. Students can have the chance to work with students enrolled in the TV and Film to get a sense of the movie magic. There is also a studio which has high-end camera equipment to give a sense of professional environment. Students will also have the chance to be in front of the camera working as talent to practice being a host for a game show or giving a one-on-one -on -one interview. College Stories tonight, we have a special treat for you watching at home. Today we got some questions answered by some of the students and faculty on campus to give us their point of view of some controversial issues. To kick things off, the first thing we asked was, a school in Parkland, Florida recently made transparent backpacks the new standard issue for student attending high school to combat gun violence. Yeah, too. This also seems like an invasion of privacy for students. Here's a scoop on why students and faculty on campus had to say about the matter. All right, I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. 
And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. What college are you going to? I don't know. What do you want to be? I don't know. My parents want me to be an architect. Architect? Yeah, but it's my future. I want to do something that turns me on. What turns you on? I don't know. We know NCC has a student success center where counselors assist every student in creating a future. You'd make a cute pirate. I don't know. We know. Be who you want to be. Create your future at NCC. That's low. That's low. That's low. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <laughs> Michael Adams. Here! Michael Adams. Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. I think it's a tricky situation because you are dealing with minors and they're not technically adults. So it's very gray. But if you're asking me personally, if you told me I had to wear this in high school, I would have never worn it and just thrown them out the window. Because, first of all, a lot of kids have medical issues. Their uh, women, ha uh, girls have f uh, feminine products. And if you're walking around with a backpack that shows every single thing, just like you said, it is an invasion of privacy for kids. I know I understand they have lockers, but a lot of the time they can't run to the locker all the time. I think to walk around a high school in one of the it's it's such a tough part of kids lives during high school, going through puberty and all these weird things that are happening to you. And then on top of it, you have to walk around with a backpack that you can see every single thing that you have. I, I don't agree with it. I understand we have to do something about the school shooting situation. I don't know if this is it. I don't know if this is it. I think uh, prevention in terms of monitoring the students and their behaviors at home and at school is a better answer than the staff and teachers having full visual access to everything the kids are holding. So... Yeah. So I think that it's a bit of a complicated question because for me, security and privacy are, it's a complicated dynamic because for example, like I don't want people to see the stuff that I put in my backpack because it's like people don't need to see the kind of chapsticks that I have or just whatever. and if I could get gross for a second, especially for like high school students and female high school students, 
female high school students don't want like boys in their class to be seeing like all their sanitary pads and tampons and stuff so i think it is like an infringement on privacy in that sense but at the same time i think it is kind of useful as a security measure um but i don't know i think it would be make more sense to have i mean to have a bag check at the um because if people have like metal detectors and security guards at the like when you go into school then there's no reason why there shouldn't be a bag check as well but i think that not wanting to have like a clear transparent plastic backpack is i don't know i feel like it can be humiliating for students who don't want their stuff to be on display but it is important to keep so clearly this is the wrong way to do to combat anything right look at this this looks ridiculous it's going to be forced at these students so it not, not also affects their privacy it also affects their freedom of choice right it's backpack is part of the student expression and they they want to create their own expressions and choose their own stuff they don't want to just be forced to be used one thing especially when it looks this ridiculous right so it's clear that they're going around and not actually tackling the main problem which is gun violence they're trying to get around with these stupid uh, side solutions and making schools like prisons and that's not going to help and they should be actually tackling the correct problem with that okay NCC provides classes for all, for all times of the morning, evening, and nighttime. We asked around campus seeing what people thought about it. Here's what they had to say. Yeah, when I went here, I did both. I did morning classes, afternoon classes, and night classes. To me, I like the night classes the best because I'm just more of a night person. I think if you're not, I never schedule classes for 8 a.m. I just never did. I always worked around it. My earliest one was like 11.30 or something like that, maybe 10.30. So I think it just comes down to what kind of person you are and, of course, your work schedule. Because night classes, for sure, give you an advantage when it comes to your work schedule. But a lot of kids here might work as waiters or might work at night. So then they have to take morning and afternoon classes. And the other problem is the availability of classes. Sometimes you can't get into the class that you want and you're trying to schedule for 10 a.m. But then you have to take one at 5 p.m. because you can't get in to the class that you need for your schedule. So it's really a mixed bag because there's so many different elements that go into it. I, it, I know it's not the best answer, but I really do think it comes down to the individual and whether they work, whether they don't work, what their major is, how many classes they want to go to, how soon they want to finish. You could take two classes a week and go here for four years. You can take five, five, six classes a week and get it done really quick. So it really just depends on the person, but I've always been a night person, so I love the afternoon or night classes. Uh, I prefer morning classes because that way you can hang around campus afterwards and get all of the work done that you have to. Um, and it just kind of gets it out of the way so that the rest of your day can be spent either working on work or like a job or, or anything like that. Um, so I'm not... I've, I've taken some evening classes, I've taken some night classes, uh, and I also, I don't drive, so the commute is kind of a, a deciding factor in that because it's easier to get public transportation in the morning than it is at nine o'clock at night, which is when my bartending class ended. So I had to get an Uber home from that class, so it's definitely easier to, to get the bus to classes in the morning than it is at night. So. I just prefer morning classes for that. Uh, I have a laptop. I don't really use it for school, though. It's kind of old. I mainly use my desktop at home. It's a PC. Uh, I've always used PCs, which so it's just easier for me. Um, when I've got the current PC I have, it was way cheaper to get a desktop than a laptop for and way more powerful. So I got the desktop, and it's worked fine for me. I have nothing against MacBooks. I think Apple's a little... Uh, annoying for being so like kind of a walled garden but uh, I like PC it has never failed me in the past it continues to not fail me I don't use iPhones or anything so I'm not in the Apple ecosystem yeah, at all so I don't feel that need to like expand on that I just you know all have Samsung phone and a PC and they work fine together and 
I have no trouble using either. Yeah. Um, I do use a Mac, uh, a laptop as a student. I have a MacBook. Um, I think it's really good. I think what computer you buy really pertains to like what exactly you want to do on it. So if you're like, if you need a lot of processing power, maybe get like, I don't know, something with like a little more RAM, like I, I like to say PC has that, but like really what I think is the new Macs, especially the pros and stuff, like they have adequate rendering, pre rendering power. And for school, all you need for me anyway is Google so you could literally have a Chromebook like any any computer so cost wise Chromebook just pick that up and then you're you're good for school uh, I've been using the same Mac for like seven years and I basically use it for everything It's not a particular thing about the Mac and all the programs that I use also run on Windows but I found the Mac to be more stable and uh, it lasts longer this I'm using the same laptop for seven years and it's still good I don't see myself buying another laptop or a computer in a s soon future because this seven-year-old laptop is still handling well so why bother right so personally i like the mac better as you might know there are always team red versus blue coke versus pepsi gryffindor versus slytherin but we wanted to know are you team pc or apple uh, i'm very comfortable with it i would definitely put myself in a self-driving car i would love to have a self-driving car i think it's simple math the car with you know, 15 sensors all around it can check every direction thousands of more times than a human could per second and react to hundreds of times faster than any human could. It would avoid any complications that come with texting and driving, drunk driving, driving when any kind of intoxicated or distracted state would be eliminated by self-driving cars. I think it would be safer overall. And uh, they, it's incomparable how much faster they are to humans. I do not love the idea. I don't like the idea of self-driving cars and machines and um, I, I don't trust it. I, I don't trust it. I think, I'm not saying people are bad, or sorry, good drivers. I think a lot of people are bad drivers, but I think a lot of people are safe drivers. And I think the idea of driving on a highway and hitting a button and then just sitting back and looking at your phone or whatever, there's too many things that can go wrong. So for me personally, I would never do it. I would. I know Tesla's have it, and I would just. I would never hit that button to let this drive for me. But I love driving. I've always loved. I, I just love driving. I don't mind road trips. I don't mind me. And my friends go somewhere. I'm always. I'm gonna drive. Like if we go on a long trip, I'm gonna drive, because there's something about driving that I really like. It. It lets me focus and forget about a lot of things. So to take that away and just let you sit like you're in the passenger seat, I don't like it. I, I really don't. But I understand why people, you know, want to do it. For me, I don't like it, and I think it's just another step toward uh, Skynet and the machines taking over. Today we are taking a look at one of the students from TV3 who has been attending Norwalk since 2017 and is focused on studying for a degree in communication in film and TV production. Here is what he had to say. So, what made you decide to do film and TV level 3? What made me decide to do TV3 is my love for film. I've been loving film ever since I was a kid watching movies and I really wanted to know a little bit about the behind the scenes and how it's done. Um, you know, I grew up watching like Shrek or whatever and you know, it's seeing how animation has changed throughout the course of from 2000 to like 2019 in like the movie film industry. I want to be a part of that and I think that's the re reason why I want to do TV3 is cuz I just want to learn more about editing and like getting footage and doing like close-up shots, medium shots, long shots, and knowing how to like build up suspense by doing lots of cuts. And no, that's mostly it, yeah. So you really seem to be enjoying this uh, point on in the class. So how does this match up to the first two film and TV production classes? Um, well, for starters, I think three, there's more freedom to plan your schedule accordingly for doing the work. And having one major project versus having three or four smaller projects. So it gives you more time to work on that one project and make it as best as it can be. Um, TV2, uh, it, you took what you learned from TV1 and you just kind of just went with it, you know, and took it a step further. Working on lighting and then um, with the noise and the volume and making sure they sound good having the mic directed at the mouth rather than just using the camera built-in mic um so there's that i do have to say that tv3 
I do like it because we get to work more on smaller things like lighting and knowing how to make somebody look more uh, menacing or look more friendly with hard and soft lighting. So I think that's really cool and how just lighting can really change how a picture works. Also how editing can really just change anything and make it look from being amazing to like really, really terrifying. So, or making something very serious into something very, very silly. So I think editing is also a very key difference done from TV two and the TV three to a bit more editing to the nitty gritty. And, um, yeah, so I, 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 I'm liking TV3, and I'll see where this takes me. So, you really seem to like these classes so far. What would you say you like most about filming TV3? Well, what I like most about TV3 is that, you know, we have this one big project. Because before, in TV2, we only had about maybe a week or two, maybe three weeks to work on one project. And then, after we were done with it, it was on to the next. So, you couldn't really kind of fine-tune that one project to make it the best it can be so i like three because we have that one project where we can just keep working on it till it becomes the best ever uh i remember doing the music video from tv2 i really like doing that and if i had a bit more time I, th I think i could have made it a lot better it's still good for my opinion but there are a few things i would change because um nothing's perfect you know so uh i like tv3 a lot so yeah all right, that was kind of most of the formal questions. Let's be a little bit more informal here. What would you say is your favorite movie and why? What is my favorite movie and why? That's a tough one. I love a lot of films. But if I had to choose one, it probably had to be Captain America, The First Avenger. I know people have their views on Marvel films not being cinema, but you know, it's still at the end of the day a movie that people did the same thing for other films. They showed up to set got good actors, had a great script, you know, they did their job. And it's not a traditional movie like Raging Bull or, you know, any other kind of film like that. But I personally enjoyed it because it's a very wholesome story about a guy who just wants to do the right thing, but he just doesn't have the physical features to serve the army. And he does anything he can. And he just puts himself after other people because he just wants to be the hero. And, you know, it's just a very, very good film. And then with values that I can relate to. After many, many years of Marvel turning out film after film each year, director Martin Scorsese recently made a statement about Marvel films not living up to the true nature of cinematography. We asked Professor Philadelphia native John Shields his stance on the matter. Uh, I tend to agree with that statement. I mean, obviously it's still cinema because it's a movie that people pay lots of money to go see. I think what Scorsese is trying to get at is that he's suggesting that there's a lack of emotional depth to these films. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lack of emotional depth to these films. Franchise films, by definition, are sort of interchangeable. They're repeatable. They're, they're, they just keep coming out and saying essentially the same thing. And they're based so deeply in myth. There are no Batman. There are no Iron Man. Not that that should keep them from being on the screen necessarily, but it's the number of them. It's the fact that there's seemingly endless capacity to make these films and to draw audiences that are relatively young and then remaining in what you might call an arrested adolescence. And I think Scorsese, is who c comes from a tradition that's rooted in a kind of more honest emotional experience films that are about people rather than caped crusaders or mythical creatures i think that scorsese is reacting to the overt commercialization of these films and the kind of deadening of the american public um in seeing films over and over and over again that are about mythical creatures. They're, they're not real people. I think that's what, plus, you know, he's, uh, he's an older fellow and probably doesn't care about Iron Man 7 or whatever it is, okay? Um, it's the kind of quote that grabs headlines for sure. 
I mean, technically it is cinema, but what he's saying is it, 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 there's nothing really at stake. When you leave the movie theater, your feelings are relatively neutral from a mar Marvel film. You may be amused, you may be entertained, but you're not feeling anything on an emotional level for the most part. I think that's what he's responding to. And his films, even his worst film, there's some connectivity to an emotional response. Something that resonates with the viewer rather than entertains the viewer solely. I think that's what he's responding to. And I tend to agree with him. I can't really tell the limited amount of films that I've seen that are franchise films. I, I, I have a hard time telling them apart. I, I feel as when I'm watching them, I don't care about the characters on the screen because they're not rooted at all in any kind of reality that I've experienced. Now, if you see a movie like that once in a while, it's fun. But if it's becoming more and more your own choices, that's what a franchise does. It eats up the rest of us. Netflix has finally met its match after being the most dominant streaming service on the web since 2007. Disney Plus launched earlier this week. More on this story right after this. Welcome back, here at the trailer for Disney Plus. Thanks you for tuning in to NCC News. I'm Juan Villaroyal. And I'm Craig McGuire. Thanks for watching and join us next time for the newest installment of NCC News. Good night, everybody.